All right, here we are. What is it? September 28th? Today, uh, 1990. I think so. Bayfield, Wisconsin with Kenny Myers. Myers or Meyer? S. S. Myers, right. Otherwise known as Conrad. Mm -hmm. To what? One or two people. <laughs> Most people know you as Kenny, right? Yeah. Tell me how you got the name Kenny. Oh, how I got the name Kinney? Yeah. Well, my dad worked at the Kinney Lumber Company in Cornucopia. And uh, when I, uh, my dad found out that uh, I was born, so he come in. And, uh, and my mother said, uh, we got a new baby, what are you going to name him? I says, no, uh, call him Kenny, that's good enough. He turns <laughs> around, goes out the door, and back to the camp. <laughs> well, that's good. Cool. But who then, but who gave uh, the name Conrad then? Where'd that come well, from? Well, you see, Kenny's a nickname. You yeah. can't, uh, when you're baptized, you got to have that. Yeah. My mother had to have a regular name. You can't go by the name of nickname. So did your mother, uh, was that a family name, or you named after anybody, Conrad? Well, relatives in the old country, uh, they uh, start with a K, but there are a lot of Conrads on our side. Which country? Which old country? Uh, uh, Germany. So you're German? Yeah, my mother comes from Czech, Czechoslovakia. Uh-huh. And here you are, surrounded by Scandahoovians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when did your folks come here? Well... Is this going on record? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I this don't is, know if we know. should tell you that or not. Oh, sure. Well, my mother, I, uh, when my dad took out his citizenship papers, a fella downtown was going to help him make it out, make him out, see. So he says, uh, when did you come over? Oh, my dad said that there were thousands and thousands of years ago. He <laughs> said, don't ask me. <laughs> well, when did they come up to Bayfield here? By God, I, do, I don't know. I mean, was it 18, oh, late 1800s? Yeah, it probably? must be in, the, in there someplace. Well, when were you born? What year? Uh, 1909. 19 so you're 81. <laughs> or gonna? Are you 81 already? Yeah. 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 You don't look it, Kenny. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> and what did your dad do up here? Well, he uh, did a little. He done a lot. We had a farm up here, past uh, up by Grover's, up this road here. And he done some farming up there. Then he worked in the mill. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, he, then he had a team of horses, and he had done a lot of work around pulling stumps and cleared out of land. Hmm. And worked in the logging camps, too. Worked right? in logging camps. Right. What was his name? Henry. And how about your mother? What was my, her name? My mother's name, Clara. Clara. My mother's name was, uh, before she was married, was Mayer. It was her maiden name, but my, she married Myers. No, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Mayor, M A Y? M A Y E R. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And did you have brothers and sisters? Oh, yeah. Six. I guess still one brother in the rest home down in Washburn. What's his name? George. And what about the others? What are their names? Oh, there was F Fred and Carl, Francis, and Max. So. Six boys. Six boys. And in the family. You fit in where? Next to the youngest, the youngest is dead. Mm -hmm. What? What can I eat? eat uh, chew too much gum. Uh huh. So, what was your mother's mother's maiden name? Was Mayor. Mm hmm. And uh, were her folks? When did they come here? Do you know that? That I don't know. I mean, did they? Were they? they was, never, she, was she from here though? No. Bayfield. Where was she no. from? She come from Arno, Austria. Oh, she came over here after. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know how my dad uh, uh, met my mother or anything else. They never talked about anything when they were. They didn't. Mm-mm. Oh. 
Only when they when they get mad at one another, then they talk German. See, <laughs> and you kids so we didn't wouldn't know, know that. What, the, what they were chewing the rag about. <laughs> <laughs> now, where were you living then? Well, you know where my nephew lives, right up here in the uh, uh, Pee Wee Myers. They call him. He's a garbage hauler. No, in that old house right up. You know where Chucky Myers lives? Yeah. Well, right up another half block up there. So just on the edge of town then. Mm -hmm. But you said you were born out, you were in Corny or someplace. No, my know. dad came in from Corny. Oh, came in he from Corny. He walked from Corny. Walked from Corny? Oh, yeah, you, yeah he, he always miles, walked in. How many miles is that? That's oh, I don't know. Corny or Squaw Bay, it's about the same thing. He walked in from Corny. 20 miles? Yeah, 18, 20 miles. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, they'd hit back out. Cause there was no roads Did you ever get out to those logging camps when you no, were a kid? No, I was on Oak Island. I, uh, when Smith, the later years, had their, uh, had his uh, logging out there, I uh, hauled a lot of his, well, they call it chuck or supplies or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I went through Frog Bay and across Frog Bay on the ice and went over to Camp 2. And sometimes I had to go over to Camp 6. Mm -hmm. And But there's a one steep hill there who's was a bugger to make. Then I'd either have to skid the beef up or, or, uh, I get get a team from the camp to give me a pull. Hmm. God. So you had horse and wagon, horse and sleighs and sleighs. That, that's all open right. water. That's, that's when she's froze. Yeah. But I I don't know why I done it because I was crazy to do it because it, I had no I was too damn young to uh, monkey around like that. There's treacherous out there. How old were you? Oh God, I don't know. Maybe fifteen, sixteen in there, but. Well, ice was heaving and one thing or another, but I didn't pay any attention to that. I just kept on going. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and whose logging camps were those? Well, that the late years, uh, they call him Cedar Pole Smith. Cedar Pole Smith? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was on Oak Island. Mm -hmm. Ed would know. Of course, Ed uh, hauled a lot of logs from Outer Island, but maybe he told you that. Yes. With the, with the plus wood. Right. I don't know if it's a press wood or outer. I don't know what they did call it at that time. What's the name of Ed's boat now? Outer Island. Oh, yeah. I think there's a press wood there. Well, did you ever work out in the uh, on the commercial fishing or anything? No. My brother did. Which brother? Carl. Who did he work with? Or oh, Ed? he had his own boat. Had his own boat? Mm -hmm. But then he got arthritis so bad, so he had a quitter. Hmm. He started too late in years, anyhow. And how about you? And what was your, aside from this hauling in the winter, what, what was your first work you would, you did? Well, see, my brother, we, work, we all worked together. There was five, six of us. He had the, oh, he had the tavern, and he had the apple orchard up here, and he had the fishing outfit, and he had... Uh, Oh, God. What which which brother was this? Fred, the oldest one. They call, Is that the one they called Fritz? Yeah. He was supposed to be the boss. <laughs> <laughs> We'd done the work. <laughs> yeah, and he started a restaurant and pool room and oh, God. Where were those? Down where, uh, you know where Stern and Field is? Mm -hmm. He went in there. Uh-huh. And what was in, when was that that the restaurant and tavern and stuff were? Oh, that was, um, well, it was way after the war, when they, uh, before the war and after the war, for the Second World War. Then he had the liver barn. Where was that located? Oh, well, we, you know where the deli is? Yeah. Well, we got a picture of the liver barn here. Rudolph Nelson used to have it. You wouldn't want to see that. Yeah, I would want to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I used you, to. Can you get your hands on it? Huh? Let's look at it right now. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what? You turn to your left when you get the fore and aft out here. Oh, yeah. 1922. Frank Upperdahl. Now, where was that camp, the Turlock camp? Furlock? Yeah, Furlock. Uh, you know where the Indian settlement is? Yeah. Well, before you get there, about two miles this side of it. On Star Route there? Mm-hmm. You go out of here to fore and aft and turn to your right. You... What is that then? You keep right on going, 
And before you hit the settlement. Right. Well, I was out there when I was a little bit of a kid. I was out there. Hmm. And did the did a guy named Furlock? Well, own the camp Furlock. Or? No, Furlock uh, worked for uh, for Henry Waxman, the mayor. Mm -hmm. And and Waxman had the mills down there. Let me see this. And we had a picture for a lot there, too. How's that, Jim? She's on the phone again. 1922, this says. Pretty big horses, huh? Well, what kind of horses did you guys have when you were hauling? Well, you see, my brother had a bought uh, Rudolph Nelson's livery barn down there. Mm -hmm. And you had driving horses. Instead of having cars, you, uh, you used them as a, like a taxi. So they weren't really work horses. No, they, drive, they? Uh, they drivers. Were trotters or yeah, something. Yeah, trotters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one team there was good that you call them Babe and Gladys, they could go. <laughs> they made two, tri two running trips to Corny and back without stopping. Is that right? Yeah, one was a patient. Pulling, what would they pull? Well, if somebody wanted to go to Corny. Uh, so was it like a buggy or was it a yeah, wagon? Yeah, a little sleigh. Oh, a sleigh. A little sleigh, yeah. Huh. They sold them all those sleighs to a guy in Duluth. Yeah. But you also said you hauled a lot of stuff. Well, then we had the trucking outfit from here to Ashton. But that was later, right? Yeah, that was later. Did you also have teams that hauled? Oh, yeah, hauled coal and uh, everything like that, you know. Regular dray line. Old rusty trucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, when did you start using trucks? What year? Oh, God, I don't know. He went into there. Well, my brother, I was pretty young. He was quite a bit older. He went in there. I think he went in there in about 19... Hmm. God. He was 19 years old. Must have been after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Have you got a picture of that liver barn? I think we got a picture of that liver barn. We tried to find it and couldn't find well, that it. That was a pretty elaborate place. They had, uh, what was it like? Well, they had rooms upstairs for uh, for the drivers, for the horses. You know, oh, somebody want to go someplace at night, and and you'd hook up a team and beds up there. And oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a two-story building. Yeah. And who else worked there? Was it just you guys? Oh or? God, he'd pick up all kinds of those guys that they they like to work there, you know. Do you remember any of them that? Oh yeah, there? there was um, there was a uh, oh, I think Adolph Morn, and of course Davy Lambert was a truck driver. After he was the first one to start driving the truck, he he hauled freight from Ashton to Bayfield. Hmm. He started a freight line from Ashton to Bayfield or Bayfield Action, or whatever you want to call him. He's a big husky guy. Oh, but there's a, oh, a bunch of those guys, you know, they like to hang around there and have a little moon and one thing or another. You know. So there was a little moon in that livery? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, who made the moon? Oh, there was a lot of, a lot of moon floating around. Well, I know, but this particular batch. Oh, oh, I don't know just where they got it. Oh, there's a lot of those guys, you know, that it... <laughs> See, where Frank Upperdahl out there, that was quite a place out there. Oh, yeah, someone else was telling us about who was the guy that had, they thought was the biggest moon maker, was out by Frank. Um, was him? You know, remember? Christensen. Oh, yeah, Big Jack. Uh, Big Jack. Him. That'd be Christensen. Right. <laughs> yeah, Bob was talking about him this morning. Who? Bob Hokinson. Oh, did he know him? Yeah. yeah. He said that was the biggest operation he thought he remembered. Yeah, I didn't, I, I wasn't out today. I heard about it. It was, a, it was quite an alley up there. Well, what was Bayfield like here when you were a kid? 
Oh, there was a lot of commercial fishing and the mills are running down here. Still had the train then, right? Yeah, I forget what year the train went out. I, I just forget. I mean, if you were born in 1909, I think it was still around. Yeah. Wasn't it? I don't know what year that... Uh, God, I forget what the year that train went out. And who were some of the the uh, guys that you hung around with? Well, I don't know. There was Eddie Roy. He's dead. And uh, I don't know. We didn't, uh, of course, the pool room. He had a, my brother had a pool room. There were a lot of guys. Nobody in particular that I hung around with too much was kind of. We uh, had too much work to do, I guess. Didn't do any running around. You started working young, too, huh? Oh. <laughs> Damn right. We had to lead them old horses all night to give them something to eat, because the old man wouldn't put them in the pasture. Just to be mean, he'd make us lead them. Is that right? <laughs> 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 you mean you had to? We <laughs> <laughs> had to lead the horses there. <laughs> Now we're finding out that the green grass is not so hot for horses while they're working them. Mm -hmm. They get belly aches all the time, you know. Right. You take them old horses in the mill that had uh, had good hay and grain. They were just like a rock, you know. Hmm. Oh, were those Belgians or? Kind oh, of all kinds of mixtures, yeah. The. Some of those uh, regular horses were better than a purebred, I think. Yeah. Well, how big of a load could they haul, some of these teams? Oh, I don't know. We asked Hor uh, Waxman had a good team, a big team down here one day, and, and uh, uh, somebody asked him how uh, how much could that team pull. He says two ton on bare ground. <laughs> They were, they were a good team. See, that's a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Of course, they wouldn't haul it for a mile or anything like that, but testing out. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, we also had, you had these pictures here. This group of people here. Get a shot of this, Jim. I know I'll give it to you. I'm going to see if I can find that liver burn picture. Does he know some people on this one? Here's right here. Just right here. Joe O'Malley. I remember. It's one of them. Okay. It's right in here, but it uh, it must have been. This must have been an earlier than uh, uh, Blacksmith Shop must have been built on after. Mm -hmm. So this was, uh, but did, when your brother and you guys had this livery stable, did it look just like this? Yeah, the door was down here. Uh -huh. And those rented rooms were up there where those the windows rented rooms were up here. Uh -huh. Well, they weren't rented, they were for the drivers for the, uh, oh, I see. Uh, like taxi, uh, horse taxi. Mm -hmm. Now, what's this other one you have here? Well, this is, uh, oh, that's Paul Bunyan's, uh, oh, you don't remember Bill Miller. Too bad Bill Miller ain't here. He could give you a hit, but he died. I can't see this one too good, but first lumberjacks picnic. Oh, this is those, that Paul Bunyan thing. Yeah, that, yeah people have told Bunyan us deal. about that. And my dad was in on the Paul Bunyan deal. That's Bill Miller up there in the mm -hmm. top. Bill Miller. Can he hang stay here for Let's see, Leonard Johnson, I don't know. Bud Sales third. Uh, let's see now. Well with the horn in the middle and the bottom there. Oh Joe Melly. Hmm. Skedgy Feldmeyer. Hmm. Oh, Carly Carlson. Hermie Sense. Oh, Wayne Jonas. 
Well, when do you think this was taken, this Paul Bunyan? Picture, this oh, picture. that's, uh, well, I can get it, get my dad's uh, picture on the frame there, or on the wall in there. It'd be the same one. That was Paul Bunyan. Is that Paul Bunyan? I don't know. They uh, look like a bunch of guys up to something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you what. Let's uh, do the date again, too. This is March 1937, right? That's what it says here. Jimmy Chainer. Who's in the middle there? That's my dad, Cap Myers. Cap? Yeah. Uh, what was it, Ed? What was his real Henry. 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 Henry, yeah. Henry Cap Myers. Who's that character on the right? Well, Jack O'Day. That's Jack. I don't miss him. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a character. <laughs> God, he was witty. <laughs> what do you remember about Jack O'Day? Me? Yeah. Oh, I I know him. He was uh. Okay, you can sit down now. Again, Kenny, if you'd like. You can't top any Jack O'Day stories. I think we've already been told. <laughs> <laughs> no. He was, yeah, I don't know if I should say it or not. <laughs> oh yeah. It was so many. Well, what do you remember him like? What was he like? Well, he was a lumberjack. Just uh, worked every other place. But he was coming down with a load of logs, and he had a big nose. See? And there's about 20 below. And the uh, guy was going to be good to him. He says, uh, Jack, he says, your nose is froze. You better put some snow on. He says, put some snow on yourself. He says, you're closer to it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was quite a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But who else do you remember as being characters and people that... Oh, I don't know. Around the pool room days, there used to be a lot of guys. How was the pool room in that corner building? Is that... Yeah. That Stern and Field building? Uh, well, yeah. Pool room were right in the Stern and Field building. And uh, on the other side was... Uh, a uh, boarding house. Mrs. Murray had a boarding house. Mm. And then, uh, and my brother turned it into a restaurant. And then he turned it into a tavern. What were they called? What names did they have? Well, uh, just Myers, it's all. Myers Restaurant. Myers Tavern. Myers, tavern. Myers Restaurant. Myers Tavern. Did you ever work in those? Oh, yeah. Doing what? Oh, I tend bar for a while. And, uh, but I was mostly on the trucks. Mm -hmm. How many years did you haul? Well, my brother had... He hauled, he had the freight line from Ashen about 30 years. Of course, I was on and off. Then after he quit, I took it, and I was on there for 30. Until when? When did I retire? Mm, that's a good question. Would it be 20 years ago? Six, wait. You're 81 now. Mm -hmm. I retired when I was 65. Yeah, it's a no good job. Why? Oh, hard work. Catch trains and all God only. What do you mean, catch trains? Well, they'd hold you till the last minute, and then you don't know if you'd make the train or not. You know, they'd pull out on you, and oh God. <laughs> Sometimes you'd have to go to Ironwood to catch it down there and... Race the train there? Yeah. <laughs> Try to catch it down there. Do you ever have some close calls? No, not no. We never had too many. Uh, I don't think we ever had a wreck. You didn't. Mm -mm. That's pretty amazing for over all those years. I remember when my brother first started out hauling. He was uh, uh, in the spring of the year. 
that uh, oh the mud was right up to the radiator down here by the fish hatchery and uh, he called up and he says I'm out of gas Davy Lambert was driving the truck and he says uh, he called up and he says I'm out of gas so there's an old horse in the barn and there was a gig there and I hooked up the horse <laughs> and took him down five gallons of gas when I got down there the horse flipped and he fell in that big rut and his feet were sticking up in the air. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was a, he was a furla or the guy that run this camp, he had that horse first. His name was Turk. And uh, you couldn't kill him. And uh, we got a rope around him and we uh, took him back on his feet. And, uh, he didn't hurt the rig or shafts or anything. Any. We got him back up. <laughs> but anyhow, we got the five gallons of gas on there. <laughs> Well, would you also haul up north and west here, up to... Oh, yeah. We used to go to Corny with stuff. People wanted furniture hauled out the settlement. And mm -hmm. Did old Frank have any uh, stories, or I suppose? Frank. Frank up and down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he had a few. <laughs> you have any about him? Huh? <laughs> no, oh, yeah, he, he uh, hollers at me on the street. Ah, uh, there's two old guys sitting on the, he hollers at me. Two old guys sitting on the seat and, uh, over in Ashton or someplace on the bench. And one guy t says to the other, he says, you know, I'm getting pretty old. He says, um, I don't remember too good anymore. I guess I told you that. And uh, so one says to the other, he says, was it you that died or was it your brother? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Frank, every time uh, he sees me, he, half a block away, he hollers at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your brother like, you know, the oldest one, Fritz? Well, he liked his whiskey. <laughs> Did he? Well, he was a gambler. He got into stock market. Because he started a lot of different businesses. Oh, yeah. 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 He, yeah. Didn't, he didn't sit around. No, he, he had a pretty good noodle on him, all right. Well, did they have... I know that in some of the places there was a period when there were slot machines around here and stuff, too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had them in the taverns. Did they? During when? During what years was this? I don't know what years they was were when, they, uh, when they had it. It was before the Second World War, anyhow. Then they took them out, and I don't know. Then the city put them back, let them put them back in some damn thing. I don't know what they are. Did with that. But you never played them? No, I didn't have none to play. <laughs> no, I didn't have money <laughs> enough to put in there. <laughs> Oh, I might have put in a nickel or so. I don't know. <laughs> How about, uh, did you hunt and fish? Uh, did you ever do any trapping? No, I've done a little deer hunting, but I don't know. We didn't have time to monkey with guns, and then any time we'd go hunting, we'd just grab a gun and run. Remember one time I went away out by Corny with a fellow across the street here. Come to find out I had the wrong shells. No. Two deer come up to the fence. and so <laughs> When I got back home, I was just as happy as ever. I thought they looked so innocent that I, I, I was ashamed to shoot them anyhow. So mm -hmm. I was just as well away. So you've never taken much for hunting then? No, we never, really never had time. Oh, we went out to... Uh, uh, we had kind of a camp car on these road jobs. You know, my brother was a co uh, construction worker, too. He kind of built that road from there to Ashen. And, uh, and then he had to build a camp car so we could sleep in there and one thing another. And yeah, that's another thing he got into. He got road building. <laughs> and uh, what was I going to say now? Oh, yeah, that one camp car. They called it a camp car. It had wheel. Oh, crude iron wheels on. And we took it out to Siskoet. 
uh, you know where that is by Corny? Mm hmm And that we hunted there. And uh, I left at the time. Uh, we hunted all day, and nobody seen nothing. And the little Indian kid that was up, he, he worked for, his name was Chick Gordon. And uh, he opened up the door, and he says, there's a deer right there, right at the door. He was, too. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Old Chick. <laughs> now, who was along that time hunting? Oh, mm -hmm. there was a fellow by the name of John Hirsch. He was a butcher here. Then my, uh, my two, three brothers were out there. And then uh, this little Chick Gordon, he was there. I don't know who else was. I guess that's all. That's all could fit in that little camp car anyhow. It's four or five minutes. Now was that self-propelled? I mean, that was a well. No, you told it. On. You told it behind one of the big gravel trucks. Oh, I see. Got a big hitch behind. Well, there was no self-propelled there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't one of those RVs. <laughs> Oh God! We had, then a big snowstorm come. We had a hell of a time getting off. We had to go up through the Siskiyou up around the hills there, some way through the brush. And, oh man! Oh man! We had a hell of a time getting off. Then we went. We couldn't get to Bayfield around the road. We had to go into Washburn, I guess, and then 13 this way, some way. I don't know what happened that time that we couldn't. <laughs> oh, went up to County C, went into Washburn, and then and that's where that was. Why we didn't come this way, I, I, there's a big ravine there or something we couldn't cross, a road was plugged or something. Now, is the livery uh, operation still there in the flood of 42? Uh, not, well, the trucking, trucking outfit had it was, trucks It in. was trucks by then. Yeah, but the horses were. Right. What do you remember about that flood? Well, I was uh, the first flood. I wasn't here. I was in uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Oh, you were gone already. You joined up, or no? Drafted. I was a hunk, handcuff volunteer. <laughs> 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 in what part of the service? I was in Forty uh, Fifth uh, Division Indian Outfit from Oklahoma. Hmm. They asked me why I was here. Well, I says I live close to Rayclef. They do. <laughs> <laughs> They were a good outfit. So that was forty forty fifth. It is surprising that you were part of that. Hmm? Yeah, they were old National Guard. Hmm. What year were you drafted? Forty two, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah. Went in forty two, and I come back in forty five. Oh, were you married by then? No. Mm -hmm. No. Well, when did you and Agnes get married? Forty five. About forty five, I guess. After the war. Yeah. Did you know her but then before, though? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, how did you two meet? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what did uh, What did Mae West say? I won her in the crap game. <laughs> <laughs> Mae West? Remember Mae West? You heard that name? Somebody asked her, uh, where did you meet your husband? She <laughs> says, uh, she says, I won him in a crap game. <laughs> No, I don't know. I was on the truck or something. Now, how that was. I guess they were after my money. <laughs> <laughs> and you had kids? Have we got kids? Yeah. Yeah, we got. Uh, Who are they? One to Nashon. Two daughters. Uh, Mrs. Schumall. What's her name? First name? Kathy. She's got a store right across on Penny's. A little fabric hut. Mm -hmm. And the other one's married to uh, Johnny Durham. You know Bobby Durham? Yeah. Married to, uh, Peggy's married to Bobby Durham's son. Uh -huh. And where are they? Uh, down in Mosinee, down by Wausau. Mm -hmm. Mosinee is only nine miles from Wausau. Grandkids? Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's some of them. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Five, I guess. Yeah, five. And one's a toughie. <laughs> so they keep you hopping, huh? When you see them. What did, what did uh, uh, Brian tell that doctor that time? Well, he was a little. He said. 
He said, he says, I hope you, you practice on somebody else before you come see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then he got into that other scrape when he told that uh, teacher that uh, she was homely or something. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we also had this picture of this ball team here. You knew some of these. This ball team. Uh, let me get a shot of it, and then you can. Okay. Tell me about some of these guys. Huh? Tell me about some of those guys. Now that was... Oh, is that uh, the same one? Okay. Yeah, I think so. That was the picture that... I mean, the picture was taken the year you were born, but you knew some of those guys later. Oh. Well, George Gordon. I know, Yeah, I knew George Gordon. He was the pitcher. He hasn't got a suit on up there, though. That's the night. Oh, yeah, I know. But a lot of these batans and stuff like that. I heard of their name. And where'd they used to play ball? Here. Way back? Yeah. Behind the high school where the new ballpark is. That's as far as back as I can remember. But what was this park down the ravine you were talking about? Fiat? Oh, yeah. They, they played... Uh, you know where the sluiceway is. You know where you know where the library is. Yeah. Or just go north. It was a big. They call that the big bowl, baseball bowl. Where that uh, walkway is now. Yeah, the... yeah. Then you see the sluiceway. Uh, sluiceway wasn't in there then. Right. Uh, that was all leveled off. The pipes from the creek run underground. They the the starting of the pipes were. Uh, up under the bridge, mm -hmm. see. So they made that. It was a little bit small, but it was a handy place. But your first ball ground was up there behind the high school. Mm -hmm. Then now, late years, they made it over again. Right. And you were you had told me something else about what did you say the buck and a quarter seats or something or the no that's uh, they that? call the baseballs a dollar and a quarter. They were a dollar and a quarters. That was the name of the baseball. Oh, is that right? They cost a dollar and a quarter, uh -huh. so they called them a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> so uh, we used to lay in the ravine, see if, of course, we never had enough money to get into the game, right. to see if we could get a fly ball, and they'd come down the ravine sometimes. Right. You know. <laughs> so who would hide in the weeds with you there? Oh, a bunch of these kids way back, you know, around town here. See if we can get one of those balls. <laughs> of course, down in a quarter, they were. As you get one of them, and that was worth something. Hmm. Now, Agnes just let, had me a note here about horses on the ice. What? What's oh, that? Oh well, then you know that taxi, taxi with the horses. Well, then uh, my brother had that good team. Had one. Uh, drove to Corny. Made a couple of trips to Corny. He was taking a guy out. To, out of the camp on uh, Oak Island, and of course those cracks are treacherous, ice cracks, maybe you know what they are. Mm -hmm. They were going to jump the crack, and of course the horses went in. They got they got the horses out, but they died on the ice. Oh, boy. They were sweaty, see. And sometimes you'd put choke lines on them if you was afraid of the ice. You'd put a slip knot, and then uh, in case you went through, you pull that line, and it, you can only uh, choke them for about three minutes, so the water wouldn't get into their lungs. See, so they wouldn't breathe it in. So you, you, in case if if you did go into the water, you would choke them and run off, and maybe you can get the team out. See. Oh boy. But if uh, if you didn't have the choke lines on, they'd breathe in that water. Well, then they'd they'd uh, choke to death. Or. Right. Oof go out 
Of course, they were pretty well, I think they were all pretty well gassed up. They wanted to go out at about four o'clock in the afternoon, and for some reason nobody wanted to take them out. So my brother said, my older brother, well, he wasn't the oldest, Carl, said, well, they, they agreed to take them out. Let's start at four o'clock in the morning. When they get out there, it'll be time for them to go to work. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, they were going along pretty quick, but about a, a mile and a half before they got to Oak Island, you see, the ice broke off and went out, and the wind shifted and came back in, and it snowed a little bit, and they drove right into almost open water, just cakes of icy. Oh. So anyhow, the sleigh, usually the springs on the sleigh was fastened to the box. So anyhow, he, he got the men out, and... Uh, and then uh, he took the ice chisel and he, and he put it into the uh, ice and he put a rope from the sleigh into the ice chisel so he thought the horses and, and sleigh would float, uh, freeze in there, and next morning we'd go out there and get them. So the next morning we went out there and here all there was was a box. It was the only sleigh that was down there, just had kingpins. So the horses went down and the box stayed there, see. Oh, boy. Otherwise, all the springs were fastened to the box. Mm -hmm. But maybe if the springs were fastened to this box, maybe they'd have went right down anyhow. Yeah. But he thought maybe if we go out there, we'd save the harnesses. And mm -hmm. We went out there, all there was was the box. Jeez. But lucky they got out of there. They were all in the water paddling around in the ice cakes, you know. Oof. And nobody got hurt. And no, one guy froze his... Um, froze his hand by the time he, mm -hmm. he was about a mile from the camp and it's cold. Mm -hmm. He froze Johnny Petit. Mm. Jeez. <laughs> Do you ever have any close calls like that? No, no, I never, uh, I shouldn't have been on there, but I was, I don't know. And of course, in those days you never had much fear, you know. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. It seems like so many families here had somebody drowned or almost drowned or oh, yeah. you know, yeah. disappear. Or. There was uh, two guys, I won't mention their name because I don't want to get involved, but uh, they were kind of clowns anyhow. They were going over the Madeline Island and uh, let's see, oh, they did, they did make it to town to get their groceries. They had no Model A or Model T or some damn thing. And they got out here a little ways and they both went down. And uh, one came up. <laughs> so uh, he was waiting on the ice for the other fellow and he says, uh, is that you, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> Harold was gasping for breath. <laughs> he says, it's, it must have been me. He says, there was only two of us in the truck. <laughs> he said, did you bring the flashlight with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that wasn't the end of it either. Well, and he was paddling around in these ice cakes, you know, and he says, uh, just keep cool now, he says. Keep cool now, I'll get you out. He says, I'm cool enough, I'm cool <laughs> He was howling, you know, he he get me out of here. So I don't know if they ever got the truck out or not. <laughs> in the old Model T or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, i got to go fix my chainsaw. Did you get enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute now. Let's, uh, let's think about this before you get you escape here. Um, what have we missed here that you're, that you, you know, that you, you did or remember? Or I'm sure there's more here. I think you're good enough. I think you. I think you probably. Didn't. Well, I don't want to start telling talk, uh, stories because I get too many people involved. <laughs> well, they're already involved. <laughs> They've been telling stories about themselves and everyone else, because that's part of history. Stories, right? Well, he's gone. So I think you shouldn't. You should stick with us a little longer here, Kenny. <laughs> 
I was telling that fella across the seat the other day, I don't know where it was, the Coast Guard used it a few years back. The guy was stranded out here with his boat. And he's, and the, so the Coast Guard says, um, what's your position? He says, I'm a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to know where you are so we can get a hold of you. <laughs> and he says, I'm a dentist from, I don't know, down the line someplace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to know their location? <laughs> I guess they find it. Well, Agnes, you know some of his tales here. Huh? Give us a hand here. We gotta. <laughs> a lot well, what'd you do for fun as you were growing up? Well, you we didn't, didn't work. You didn't work all fun, the time, huh? huh? You didn't work all the time, right? Well, we had seventy-five cents for Fourth of July, and we got balled out for spending seventy-five cents. I know that. The old man says if you want to blow your firecrackers off, he says we'll go up on the farm and you blow them off up there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like he was pretty tough. Yeah, he was. He said he never got tired till he was 65. Hmm. My mother used to ball him out when he go up there on Sunday and work. <laughs> I'm going to take no time to Eat, he says, if it rains or it gets too dark, then I'll eat. <laughs> and how old was he when he died? I don't know, he was about 81, I guess. When your dad died? 85. Was he? I don't, I don't think so. Definitely, 85. Mm -hmm. 85, huh? Yeah. In what year? 41. Oh, my mother? How hard she worked in the broken Oh, yeah. What was, what was she like? What was her name again? Angel. Uh, Clara. Clara. <laughs> yeah, she broke her, li her hip, limped all her life. Doctor said it about a couple inches too short. Broke it when she was old. Oh, God. I, I can't. I was pretty young. I can just faintly remember. I guess they took her down to the train on the wagon or team of horses. And... Uh, but anyhow, we had no farm up there, like I was telling you before. Mm -hmm. We had a, one of those Jersey cows. You know what Jersey cows, they're kind of crazy. They're not like a Holstein or a Guernsey on the Jersey. So anyhow, I don't know what the hell happened. But anyhow, she was uh, she was ahead of the cow, and the, and, the, and the cow was behind her. I don't know what, what, what is, if she's trying to lead the cow or the cow is following her. Where the, that little jersey got kind of jumping around, and she jumped to one side. Uh, and uh, when she jumped to one side, she stumbled on a rock, and she broke her hip. And she was for the rest of her life. Mm. Limped and worked. Oh, God. Yeah. Worked in the field all day and made all the washing by hand and all the cooking. Yeah, she'd sit there at night and with a kerosene lamp and she could read and eat a little piece of candy and knit at the same time. She didn't have to look at her needles there and she mm -hmm. just you ever see that when they knit like that? Mm. Mm -hmm. It always amazed me. <laughs> yeah. So it was the farm mostly cows and well, pasture and you have no, to just crops. Oh, was just about one or two cows, but the rest was all berries and potatoes and beans and had some cannery down there. We raised beans. Mm -hmm. Did you ever work in the cannery? Oh, a little bit, a little bit, but not much. How about herring? Did you ever work down in the herring? Uh for booths. Yeah, I panned uh, for, uh, salbutan for. Uh, he, what do you mean panned? 
Sally Badan had a big fish house down here where the Coast Guard is. Uh, you mean panning? Yeah, what is that? Well, they got pans. Uh, they're about that thick, about that long, and about that wide. Mm -hmm. And you'd overhand the fish. You'd slap them this way and that way and until your pan was full. Then they put the cover on. Then they shove them in a... Uh, uh, in a, uh, well, they'd stack them in ice, put ice on top, and then put a lot of salt, and then they'd freeze them. Then mm -hmm. ship them out, frozen. they'd freeze like that, then they'd ship them out. Next morning, they'd have to take them out of the pans, run them through hot water, and they flip them old pans, you know, and the mm -hmm. fish would come out, of course, the pan, they were all froze. Right. Hot water, you can't leave them in there too long, because you'd freeze the, or throw the fish out. Mm -hmm. But this George Gordon used to, used to be the flipper, He's a baseball player. He used to be the main, main flipper. Oh yeah. <laughs> it seemed like half the town worked in the herring when they in the fall. Oh yeah, the tugs and the boats are. Uh, that used to be a big thing. Well, what other stories we got here? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's enough for a while. He's got so many, and he's not thinking today. Oh. Well, some of them are pretty raw. We don't want to get into oh, that. Not raw. You're not any raw than we've heard, no. Kenny. I'm serious, you know. So, <laughs> besides, most people in town have heard him, probably, haven't they? <laughs> You know, stories uh, come to you sometimes, and, and then you forget, and you can't. Hmm. Uh, I could tell you a story about my dad, but I don't know if a person should tell a story about that. I guess it wouldn't hurt me. Oh, about when that priest was, uh, yeah. Yeah. When had him uh, turn Catholic? or. Of course, they had a farm up here, and the pri he used to work with the priest. You know, the, a little bit during the day, he used to pull stumps and mm -hmm. all the stuff as that. Uh, and then the priest uh, used to come up and visit at night. You know, he had no place to go, a little kerosene lamp. But my mother always told this story. And then he says, uh, tonight I'm going to come up and you know, give your dad a good sermon. Yeah, I'm going to convert him. Because my dad's language wasn't the best neither. Because <laughs> the priest knew that, see. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, that poor priest, he talked and he preached and he preached and he preached for about two hours. <laughs> of course, what would run through my dad's mind wasn't religion. It was chickens and logging and cows and horses. That's all that went through his mind. Mm -hmm. After he got all through, he said, what do you think, Henry? Well, he'd give a big yawn. He says, I think we'll plant the whole thing in oats. <laughs> <laughs> so out the door, he said, there's no use. He said, out the door, the priest went. Where do you go from town to town? Hmm? You you go from town to town or what? No, no, we're just doing this here because I know uh, Mary. Hmm. Well, why don't we take a little break here? Maybe something will come to mind. <laughs> what was that? Well, my dad was had a load of manure, and uh, he was talking to. Uh, Oh, Burton stopped, or some doctor stopped him, and uh, he wanted to talk to him. And he told the doctor, he says, my time is important. <laughs> 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 he said, I can't even walk around with you. He said, I got an important job. <laughs> and here he's talking to the doctor. <laughs> what about the teeth, Kenny? His teeth? Oh, he went down a picket. 
Oh, yeah. He had 16 teeth pulled. And, uh, and, uh, I think he only charged a dollar a tooth that time. And, uh, my dad went down there, he said, uh, he pulled all those teeth. He told, he told the doctor, aren't you going to pull the rest of my teeth? Holy God, he says, you're bleeding like a stuck pig now. He says, I pulled 16. And my dad says, I can't waste time coming down here for bunker with you all the time. He said, <laughs> pull off. Pull off. <laughs> oh, God. Tough old guy. Small man, What did he look like, Kenny? Well, it's his picture there. But yeah. Oh, he was he was pretty big when he was he was stronger than than Knox. He was. Ray Gagne told me I don't know how true it was, but they had they had these little contests years ago. They didn't have this um, uh, games and stuff, but they had a candle breaking contest. Uh, Ray Gagne told me he lived over here. Of course, they're both dead now. So uh, all these old big men got up and breaking these can oak stocks, you know. The old man says, uh, I don't want one stock. He says, I want two. And Ray told me, he said they broke, he snapped two of them off. Hmm. That's, that's, what, that's what he told me. Huh. So he didn't want to cross his path. Well, he never really fought, but uh <laughs> <laughs> his bark was pretty hard, wasn't it? Yeah, he had enough bark. Did he? He'd bark at you kids? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I shouldn't, I don't know, I shouldn't put in uh, stories about my dad. Go ahead. Why? No. Well, it's all right. Anyhow, <coughs> a horse had a, a sore leg, he cut his leg or something, I don't know how he And he went up to a drugstore and he wanted some, and, uh, the drug, he said, the druggist, he says, I want some carburashes. <laughs> carburashes? Yes, I want some carburashes. God, the druggist didn't know what the hell he was talking about. By God, he figured it out after. He wanted carbolic acid. <laughs> <laughs> Did Ed or anybody have any stories? Oh yeah, everybody's had stories. You know, about we must have known Morty. Morty? Oh yeah. What was Morty like? Oh, I don't know. He just ten bar all his life. Did you ever go up to Greg Kenny's? He didn't know Morty. Greg Kenny bought Morty out. No, I haven't. Yeah, Morty. Of course, Morty got the business from his old man. His old man had a, a tavern down here at, by Booth Dock. Where? Well, you know where Jabose is? Yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. About the pageant days, Kenny. Passing ground? Oh, I, I didn't know too much about it. Of course, my mother. My brother hauled all that stuff out there. Did you go out there when they had that? I was out there, yeah, I was pretty young. That was, uh, I was out there one of the, I didn't understand that play. It was, uh, it was a beautiful spot out there. You ever been out there? No. They call it Schooner Inn now.
Yeah, well, I hauled a guy over. He come in by express, and I had to haul him to Bayview. Of course, he hauled the freight and express it. One time after the trains went out, when I come in from Ash, we hauled over here. <laughs> my brother, my mother come running out and want to know if I had a dead man on the truck. I said, dead man? Oh, God, yeah, I says, I got one on there. <laughs> <laughs> the undertaker looking for a dead man here. Yeah. Of course, I, I had a little lunch, went up the house and had a little lunch before I unloaded my stuff, see. <laughs> What other kind of stuff did you haul? Oh, haul coal. All kinds of freight, everything. All kinds of freight. Ice? Did you ever haul ice around here? Oh, yeah. We hauled ice from uh, Hermie Johnson. He was at San Bay. He of course, they had the ice house, too. Where was that? Oh, Booth had a big one. Oh, you painted a picture of the ice house, Booth Fish House? Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, Booth was, oh, Sally Batan had an ice house, too. And where'd the ice come from? <clears throat> well, the lake. Who would who cut it out of the lake? Who would... Well, they had a bunch of money, uh, men, and they cut it with saws. Then they'd, uh, they'd mark it, then they'd have their chisels and snap it, and your hunk could break off, see, in squares. Mm -hmm. Then they had a big ramp going up. And then they had their hooks behind, and then the team with a block and line would pull it up to the ice house. Down mm -hmm. they'd go, see. Mm -hmm. Where was the ice cutting? Where was this located? Well, you know where the ferries land now? Yeah. That was Booth's big fish house down there. Right. And they'd cut ice right there? Yeah. Cut ice right there. And Sally Patans was over there with the Coast Guard. Out. That was solid bit hands. Right. But would you haul it to the houses too? Yeah, yes. a little bit of it delivered, yeah. But most of it they use for packing the fish. Right. See, that's uh, that lake ice was better than this uh, ice they make with the machine. It's more solid. Mm hmm. Oh, down to uh, Ironwood? I don't know where. No, you, you took a few ladies somewhere, and everybody was. It was an open car, no, no side curtains. Well, it wasn't open, but the other car that was towing us too mud on the windshield, we couldn't see. Oh, and I stuck my head out, and then I get. <laughs> oh, the ladies were screaming. Oh, <clears throat> there were three sisters up here. And they had one, another sister down in Ironwood. And uh, they wanted to go down to the funeral or hospital or some damn thing to see her or something. I don't know what it was. My brother had an Oakland, a car by the name of Oakland. You remember Oakland cars? Mm -hmm. You heard of them? Didn't you ever hear of Oakland? I don't think so. Quite did you know? <laughs> and... Uh, Anyhow, we got by uh, uh, Birch Hill down there, or someplace around Saxon, and the car stopped. Oh, and the roads are muddy. And here comes a guy with a great big car, and uh, they said, do you need any help? I said, yeah, we said we'd like to have some help. I said, but I don't know. So, But I never had a chain. So... Uh, <laughs> we went over into some farmer's field there and we we uh, got some hay wire or some fence wire, barbed wire I think it was. Mm -hmm. Well I said we better get enough now so we can, so we don't uh, break down here. So we got enough, they wired it up and, and two guys, I don't know if they were, they were in pretty good shape. They had a great big car so the way we went. 
and the mud was flying and flying, and the, pretty soon the, the the windshield was so plugged that I couldn't see anything. Then I stuck my head out, <laughs> and I, then my face was all full of mud, because there was no blacktop then. <laughs> so we got into a town, and um, I woke a guy up. Of course, he didn't like it because I woke it up, but he had a sign on the door, day or night, he says. <laughs> and uh, I woke him up, and that's when fuel pumps first came out on a car. Otherwise, they're all gravity. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, anyhow, he says, uh, you know what he's doing, all right? He took the fuel pump. He says, your fuel pump is sticking. Well, I said, you got to fix it. you got to fix it. I don't know, he charged a dollar, a dollar and a half or something. Mm -hmm. He put it. But by God, he got her going. So we got down. We got down to Enwood, all right. And there was an awful mess. And the women in there were screaming and hollering. And oh God, <laughs> <laughs> I had my head out and I couldn't see. And I was hollering at them to cut it out and slow down and <laughs> stop or something. I don't know. <laughs> what about the old tire and the oats? Hmm? Oh, when Billy Miller went to the settlement? Something like that, yeah. Oh. Oh, Billy Miller, that, he's in that one of these. Oh, that was when we was hauling malt. Oh, we was hauling malt from Minneapolis. We had an old truck, and the road run around the junction. They don't run into Ashland the way it is. Oh, it is the last part of... December or November, but it was cold. And when we got right on the bridge, right on the, by before we get to the junction, there little crick there, we lost the plug out of the radiator. Oh God, it was dark and cold, and it wasn't a farmhouse. There was nothing. So um, the fellow I was with, his name was Billy too, Billy Haskins. He just died here not too long ago. I said, Billy, what are you going to do here? We, we, uh, the creek has froze over and we haven't got pails. I said, what are you going to do? Or what are you going to put in this radiator? Jeez, he says, I don't know what the hell to do. Well, I says, we're half freezing to death. I said, I'll get out of the truck and I'm going to stop the first car that comes down the road. God, I was never so glad to see anybody in all my life and here was Billy Miller. He was, uh, oh, he knew everything, and nothing he didn't know. He sa I says, Billy, I says, uh, we're stuck. Where can we get something to put in this radiator? I said, I don't care what it is, water or anything. Ho! Oh. He says, can you make it up the junction? Well, he says, we'll have to make it up there. Don't get it too hot now, he says, because you got nothing in there. Well, so we'd run it a little ways and stop and let it cool off. Wrote a little farther. Well, he said, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of him. He said, there's barrels there for you, there's water, everything for you. And I, I was kind of nervous, and I didn't ask him why he he knew all that or how he come. And he knew all that. So we we made it up there all right, and we got up to the junction. How, how he knew, I don't know. You couldn't see our hand in front of you. So we got up the junction, and... Here there's two big barrels and nothing froze up. So uh, I thought, gee, this is pretty nice. Peels are for us and everything. So uh, the fellow that was with me, we, we lost the bolt. It wasn't a petcock, it's just one of the threads on, just screwed mm -hmm. up in the radio. So anyhow, we whittled out a little stick, a jackknife, and mm -hmm. drove it up with a little hammer. We filled her up and the way we went, went down to Minneapolis. <laughs> Didn't freeze up, didn't get too hot, didn't get too cold or nothing. We had a blanket in front of us watching the gauge because mm -hmm. we thought there was water in there. Thing. So we got down to Minneapolis and we got loaded and we got to come into a gas station. It says, I'm gonna, we're going to get back in ice before it gets too dark because we, we, got, we got some junk in this radiator. So anyhow, we pulled into the gas station, I checked the oil and I lifted up the hood, the whole motor was white. You'd think a snowstorm hit it. So I asked that fellow that was with me, his name is Bill, 
He was kind of a mechanic, too. I said, what's the matter with this motor, Bill? God, he says, I don't know. I said, it's all right. It's all white. It looks like a snowstorm. So I put a little bit on the end of my finger, and I, oh, God, I says, I know what it is. It's salt brine. <laughs> See, I, at the old junction, they had no waterworks. These old depots, all they had was, was barrels and a little fire. They take the pail and throw it on the... Mm -hmm. So we had salt brine in the rain there. <laughs> okay. So anyhow, when we got down there, the guy at the gas station said, well, there's only one thing you can do. He said, I'll give you the hose and flush her all good. And he says, maybe it'll be all right. So I thought the head gasket, everything would be eaten up. But it didn't hurt that son of a gun any. Is it? We flushed her all good. And he gave us a little plug to put in. And he said, put some water in. So away we went. We come home. Good all right. Hmm. Oh, that's that same Billy that told us where the water was? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got out the Indian settlement. He had an old car. Of course, at that time, they only had clincher tires. So he got some oats from a farmer there. You put oats in the, in the tire and then pour some water on. Get her on quick and she'll swell, see? <laughs> you don't need no... <laughs> he done that. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to do it quick. You put your put the oats in then, and mm -hmm. throw the water on, and the oats are swellsy. Oh, the clincher tires. Well, they almost got clincher tires now with these uh, uh, with these tubeless tires. About the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they used to use popcorn and rope. And is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he was full of those tricks. Those guys had all kind of... Well, should we call our day? I think so. Okay. We will. We settle this. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs>